Okay, thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, we're going to be walking through <clears throat> uh, one of the core foundational principles of the company, which is profit share. And profit share is actually what binds and also helps create the culture at Keller Williams because we know that if everyone is profitable, everybody's succeeding, right? So that's the that's kind of the idea, and that's what binds us all together is is the idea that we're all kind of rooting for one another to become more profitable, right? And as we help the company grow, the company shares the profit with us as agents. Um, it's profit share is different than revenue share, right? Revenue share is sharing some of the revenue, um, but profit share, you, you can't have a business without profit, right? Without profit, there is no business, even with a a nonprofit, the whole goal is to earn profit and then give it away, right? So even a nonprofit company uh, is interested in getting in, in creating profit, right? So I'm going to do three things today. I'm going to first walk through this graphic I have on the screen. Then we're going to watch a short video explaining it. And then I'm going to go through a brief PowerPoint, okay? So how does profit share work? That's the first part. It works like this, a non-capper, that means someone who's not yet capped, right? In the, the, the cap that we all pay into the market center. Someone who's not yet capped pays company dollar into the market center through their commission split, okay? From there, it moves to the market center, pays out for expenses such as rent, utilities, and staff, among other things. So they pay their monthly expenses out of the um, gross commission that comes in. After the, all the expenses have been, play, been paid, the profit is what's left over. And from that, the profit is split between the investors who took the risk in opening the market center and the associates who helped it grow, okay? <clears throat> that profit then goes into the associate profit share pool, okay? It's divided by the gross company dollar. And then it's times by the, the amount that the associate that was your that you sponsored has paid in that month towards the profit. Okay, so the math behind this might be a little bit confusing, um, but this gives you a brief rundown of how that works, right? Um, and the market center shares, I believe it's forty eight percent of profit with the agents. Okay, so are there any questions that have come up? based on this graphic on how that works, right? Agent pays in company dollar, market center pays their expenses, profits what's left over. Profit is split between the market center or the investors and the agents. And the way that you as the agent take advantage of that is the, there's a profit share pool divided by the company dollar the agent provided times the associates company dollar that they contributed that month to the market center. So the way that works is simply if, if you invite someone to the company or have a conversation with someone about your experience at Keller Williams and they join the company, they're going to be asked who had the biggest influence on you joining your company. And if you're here, you've already been asked that question, right? And then you name someone. That's the same way it works for you. You invite someone, maybe you invite them to a training. You share some information you learned at a team meeting. Um, you share the book shift or MREA with them. They decide to join the company. Um, and then they name you as their sponsor. And then when they produce, then they will produce and, and, and add to the company dollar. And then you'll, you would get a portion of that, um, at month's end when all of the numbers are run through and processed. Okay. Any questions on that? All right, now bear with me for a minute. I'm going to stop my screen share and then I'm going to jump into a short video. Let me get rid of this. And here we go. Nope, one second. Okay, let me do another screen share.
and I'll bring this over. Okay, everyone can see this, correct? Yes. Okay, now I'm just gonna quick play and I wanna make sure everyone can hear the video, so. When deals close, a Can everyone hear that? Yep. 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 Okay, perfect, here we go. Agents who haven't capped. When deals close, agents who haven't capped pay company dollar to the market <clears throat> center. The market center uses that money to pay its bills. What's left over is profit. Every real estate business is in business for profit, and usually the owners keep all of that profit. This practice makes sense. Owners invest in businesses with the hope of seeing a return. At Keller Williams Realty, we do things a little differently. We believe in growing the business together. So we split the profit between the owners who took the risk and the associates who have helped grow the market center. Roughly 52% goes to the owners who took the risk and roughly 48% goes to the associates who helped grow the market center. So, how is it dispersed? We figure out what percentage of the market center's profit is a result of that associate, and we take that percentage of the profit share pool and disperse it through the branches of that associate's profit share tree on a monthly basis. The associate sponsor gets half, the associate sponsor's sponsor gets 10% and so on until all of it is dispersed through seven levels of sponsorship. At Keller Williams Realty, we believe the profit will grow exponentially when everybody has the opportunity to share in it. We believe in finding the win-win and in doing the right thing because together, everyone will achieve more. So again, I'm just going to ask, are there any questions based on that, on that brief video that you guys watched on how this works? So Matt, I have yes. a question. So if we don't have, if we don't bring someone to the company, like a new agent, then that means that we will never be able to get a profit or it, because I hear someone in the office that said like, after three years, we are part of the profit sharing, but I, I want to make sure. Yeah, it's that's, that's, that's called, <clears throat> that's called vesting. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you what that looks like in this PowerPoint that I'll pull up next. Um, but you are correct in that to take advantage of the profit share, um, we as agents are rewarded with profit share as we help the company grow and invite other agents to the company that join or someone who's unlicensed that wants to get licensed and they join. Um, when they join, they're gonna be asked the question just like you were asked when you started, who had the biggest impact on you joining our company? And when they name you, then that means that when they pay in company dollar and the market center is profitable, you get to have a portion of that profit. Does that help clarify? Yes, but if I don't bring anybody, if I stay with a company for years, eventually do I, uh, do, am I going to get part of it or not until I bring someone? It's only if someone names you as their sponsor. Got it. Okay. When, they, when, when they join the company. That's the only Got way that we can take good. advantage of that. Yep, exactly. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to do another screen share here and I'm going to put on the PowerPoint number two share. Nope, not that one, this one. Okay. Boom. Okay. So this is gonna walk us through and give us a bit more detail on how that profit share works. So what is it? This is the things we're gonna cover. How does it work? Develop a pur purposeful plan for your passive income. How, profit share tree, how a profit share tree grows, growing your tree, and then building your passive income plan, okay? So what is passive income? It, passive income is income that has no risk. There's no legal risk, no financial risk, no down payment, no phone calls, right? It's literally passive. The only active part is building a relationship with someone 
that uh, either would like to become a real estate agent or someone you worked with on a transaction, right? And then you start to build a relationship with them. That's, that's the only action you take beyond that. Um, it's all 100% passive from that point on. Who benefits from it? You and your family, obviously, your market center and all of KW. Obviously, the more agents we have and the more profit we earn, the more services and benefits we can provide to the agents that are at our market center, right? So it benefits everybody. <clears throat> Again, it's part of the culture that we have at this company that ties us together. Profit share is a part of that culture. What would you do with profit share? What will you do with that? Who is in the profit share system? Um, who do you know? And, and you and every person within Keller Williams is the answer to that question. Everyone is in the system. It's now up to you, to us, to take advantage of it. So again, just briefly, how does it work? An associate joins the market center and names you as their sponsor. Then pay, they pay company dollar when they close transactions. The market center is profitable. And our market center has, has always been profitable. On the 21st of the month, some of the market center's profit is automatically deposited to your account. So every 21st of the month is when we get our profit share check. It's auto deposit, right? There's a special on the bottom. You are not getting a portion of the associate's commission, right? That would be more considered revenue share. You are actually sharing in the owner's profit. So it's nothing to do with the agent's money going to you. It's the agent's goes into the market center and then the market center takes that and gives that back to the gives a portion of that back to the sponsor uh how does it work vesting so this is this is kind of what you were talking about Deanna, to begin with for agents who joined keller williams prior to april 1st 2020 when you've been a keller williams agent for three years and a day you are vested that means that means that when you're vested you can leave keller williams and still receive profit share that's what the vesting portion means. So let's say I had 10 people in my profit share tree and then I'm gonna retire. I still get to reap the benefits as long as those agents are still with the company. I still get, I still get benefits from that profit share um, in perpetuity. It can go on forever, right? As long as that agent is with the company. <clears throat> For those agents who joined Keller Williams after April 1st, 2020, when you've been a Keller Williams associate for seven consecutive years in a day, you are vested. When a vested associate makes a business decision to move to move to a competing brand, their profit share no longer follows. So that's been the change as of April 1st, 2020. For those associates who choose to return to Keller Williams within six months of moving to a competing brand, their vesting period will be reset to reflect their, their prior vesting date and downline. You can will your profit share but as a beneficiary. So your profit share <clears throat> can be left to your family, your children, whoever you would like, but it's a willable asset, right? And you have access to all profit share reports on mykw.kw.com. That's where you're going to find your profit share reports. So to take advantage of this, <clears throat> like anything in life, we'd want to develop a purposeful plan. So we wanna know how to build our passive income, have a plan, plan in place to activate the passive income potential and utilize the KW resources, profit share on KW Connect and KW Maps coaching program on profit share. So there's plenty of information on this within KW Connect if you wanna explore more. Here's how the tree, the tree grows. You are already an agent at KW. Through your relationship building efforts, invitations. Um, actually, this one would be your sponsor. So this one, this person, sorry, this would be a person you invited and they joined the company, right? So there's you and then your sponsor, the person that you're sponsoring. And sorry, I got to back up. I, I had it right the first time. This is you. This would be the sponsor that you named that already was a part of the company, right? So this would be your sponsor, the person that had the biggest impact on you joining. So there's you, there's your sponsor, there's your sponsor's sponsor. And then, so th this down here, your sponsor and your sponsor's sponsor, they're down on this end. This is you and this is building your profit share tree, 
right? So these are the agents here that you've invited to the company and they've decided to go ahead and join. They are now in your downline, as we call it, or your profit share tree. That's your first level. Now let's say those people that you've invited and have joined the company, they also invite people and those people join the company, right? That's your second level. And this goes seven levels deep. We wanna focus on the first level. I heard a stat, this was actually back in, I think it was might've been 2016 or 2017 that on average, if you've got 15 people in your first level, in your first level downline, after a, I think it was a 10 year period or 12 year period, you're averaging about $100,000 a year. There's people in this company that make 500, 700, a million dollars a year in profit share. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's a huge, it's a massive opportunity to take advantage of. So again, who can we start to build our tree around or with agents you do deals with, past clients, relate, refer, and recruit, right? So this one would be a, a sample of who you could think of that might come to be in your first level, starting to create a list of people that you might start to specifically talk about Keller Williams with, okay? Where can you find people to build these sorts of relationships with? Start the conversation, set up a time to meet, look for opportunities to help and refer them to the team leader, Andy, or myself, right? I also meet with agents on a regular basis or agents that, agents or people looking to become agents that an agent in our office has referred to me or called me and said, hey, could you reach out to so-and-so? Um, they're thinking about making a move. So it's really just about starting that conversation either with a licensed agent currently that you've done a deal with, someone from your sphere, you could simply reach out to your sphere and say, who's looking for a career change, right? Um, anyone in the general public, maybe you have, you're out uh, having dinner somewhere and the server is doing a remarkable job, right? That would be someone you could say, hey, you know, you've been doing an excellent job here tonight. We we're very happy with the service that we've had. Have you ever considered a career in real estate? I think you'd be really good at it. That's easy to do and people will simply be flattered. That may turn into nothing, but it may turn into something. And then you're gonna find that people are simply flattered when you say something like that to them. You might then decide to share a book like the MREA with them so they can have a clear understanding of how to build a real estate business, right? And then it's a matter of simply just like your lead gen efforts to your database or finding business, it's the same thing. You'd wanna have um, something in place so that you can stay in touch with these folks and continue to build a relationship. Set a meeting. This could be a meeting with a co-op agent, someone that you did a transaction with. <clears throat> Maybe it's a meeting with an agent you just met, right? Maybe you're at a, at a continuing education course at SPA or something like that. You, you start to hit it off with another agent there, right? Um, you could be inviting an agent to join you at an event. That's another way to find people. Like we have, we have our regional events here at Keller Williams um, often, at least once per quarter, these larger events or any event at the market center, any kind of training, you could simply start to invite them to that. Keller Williams trainings are open to any agents at any brokerage. We're gonna skip the activity for today. Um, Another thing to pay attention to is look for opportunities to help. So getting to know that person, sharing insights to support each other. That might be a, a co-op agent, right? Obviously ask them about themselves because what you wanna do is build a relationship. Share some of your business tools and insights that you've taken away um, from things that you've learned at Keller Williams. Be open to any outcomes. And I think that, that also means don't be concerned or worried about what the outcome might be. Um, and of course, time will enrich the relationship. So again, it's about being purposeful and staying in some sort of contact with these folks uh, moving forward in time. Come from contribution. So things you could, things, these are some things that you could actually share with someone, I would say primarily a co-op agent, but it could literally be anyone. Any insights that you've gotten from a team meeting? 
um, the GPS worksheet, right? Most agents and other brokerages don't use those productivity tools. They might simply find that fascinating that we have a, a one page, a one page business plan um, that keeps you on track called the GPS. The 411 worksheet, again, that's, that's four weeks, um, one month, one year. We, we in coaching use the daily action checklist, which has the GPS and a version of the 411 that we call the daily action checklist. But it's sort of the same thing, right? Um, books, the one thing, the MREA um, and the MREAI, the, the Millionaire Real Estate Investor. And, and then, of course, Shift. All of these are fantastic information to share with somebody as a gift, okay? Refer them to the team leader. So refer them to Andy or refer them to myself. Um, and this is a simple little script that you could do that with. I love doing transactions with you. Or you could simply say, hey, I had a really great experience with you getting, you know, one, two, three banana street closed. I thought you were awesome. I told my team leader or I told uh, another leader in our office just the other day how great the transaction went. Um, he or she will be calling to thank you for the way you do business. Now, would you promise me you'll take the call, right? And this is simply a thank you call. Again, this is just a way to continue to have a touch point and start to build a relationship. And now you don't have to worry about it. You can continue to follow up with that person. But once you pass it off to Andy or myself, we're going to kind of take it from there. And anyone that you refer, we are going to be, you know, it's, we are going to honor the referral. So, so the leadership is not going to have the person become a part of their downline. We're going to be encouraging them to name the person that referred them to us. Okay. So Felicia, if you referred someone um, in their onboarding process, they're going to be encouraged to name you because you were the one that had the biggest impact on them joining, right? Objection. So if you're calling and asking, would they, would they take the call and they say, oh, I don't, I don't want to be recruited, right? This is a great response. I, oh, it's, you know, I apologize if it came off that way. We're not intending to recruit you. Recruit you. Um, so I hope you're not disappointed. My team leader uh, and I just want to thank you for whatever it is, your commitment to the transaction, your responsiveness, whatever it might be, right? And I've got some other really brief scripts that I can show you as well that you could use for that. What not to say, nothing negative about someone else's company. Oh, you're at ABC Realty, they suck, right? Nothing like that. Anything negative about someone else's broker, right? Nothing, you just, we wanna keep any negativity or bad mouthing out. That's just a good rule of thumb, no matter what, in any situation, never talk poorly about another company. Um, and anything negative about what you think they might be experiencing. Right. Oh, I heard it's pretty rough over there. You must be having a real rough go of things, right? Nothing like that. How does your team leader prefer to receive referrals? I would say the best way to refer an agent to myself or to Andy would probably be text, right? Just write a quick text. Hey, Matt, would you mind reaching out to, you know, Angie Anderson? And uh, she's with whatever realty and she's maybe thinking about making a move or whatever it is. And then just make sure to provide the phone number and email if you have it, but at least the phone number. That way we can reach out to that person by phone and then to send a text to follow up. So I'd say that's the best way to send over the, the referral at this point would be to text it. Okay, we're gonna skip that activity as well. Follow up. So connect with the, this is, again, these are ways for you to continue to build a relationship with someone until they decide to make the fantastic decision to join Keller Williams. Connect with the agent on social media. So if you're doing a transaction with someone, and I would say this too, if you're doing a transaction with someone and it's not going well and the agent is subpar, right? They, they have a bad attitude. They don't know what they're doing. Maybe it's not someone that you enjoyed working with. That's probably not someone to invite, right? So just focus on the people that you clicked with, that you connected with, or that you were, were impressed by, um, or maybe you learned something from that agent, right? That's a great way. That's, that's kind of flattering to them. If you, if you reached out to them, I, you know, I just wanted to say thanks to the transaction. My team leader is going to reach out to you. Um, 
I, I, I want to let you know, I learned this little tidbit from you and I really appreciated it, right? Call the agent about an item you shared. If you're sharing a book with them or some other sort of uh, tip or invitation to an event, call them afterwards after you've shared that to make sure they received it and see if they have any questions or see what they thought about that. Invite them to a class, right? Any class you can invite them to at any time. We'd like to know if someone outside the company is being invited and is gonna attend, just so we're aware that that person's there in the class and maybe afterwards we can have a, a two minute conversation with them, right? Enter them into command and track when you talked, when you connected with the agent, what you talked about and when you'll follow up next. So you can create a tag, call it whatever you'd like, you know, um, profit share tree, recruiting, whatever, tag those individuals with that tag. And then you can simply search for the tag and make sure, you know, on a monthly basis or something like that, that all those people have been touched in some way, right? Just like you would with a contact that you're looking to help make a move. It's the same, it's the, all the same processes, the same mindset around that. You could offer your KW app, you could share your app with them so they can see some of the technology that we have to offer. We're gonna skip that activity. And we're kind of winding down to the end here. So what we covered is what the profit share is, how it works. We did talk about developing a purposeful plan, how the profit sheet, profit share, <laughs> how a profit share tree grows. I don't know why profit share tree is tough, but I, I'm, having, I'm struggling with that one. Um, and then what your profit, profit share tree looks like. Are there any questions on these items that I covered? And here's some things maybe to spark some ideas. Did anyone learn anything today that they didn't know before? Yes, I learned a lot. Okay, good. Um, how will what you learned impact your business? Well, I'm gonna, you know, like I had sent people to the office for that class that you, um, you do monthly. Yep. But now it's like, uh, I think I'm gonna go back and, you know, like reach out to them. Yes. And ask them like, Hey, so how are you? Yeah. You what know, are your what thoughts? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So just try to motivate them more. And, you know, most of them are like people from my sphere, like from Facebook. And they are there because they see like, oh, I see that you're doing great. And I want to do the same thing. Yeah. They don't know how hard it is, but I'm not going to tell them. No, <laughs> no. Let 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 me or Andy talk, talk to right? them about them. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, <laughs> yeah. And like the one that... Um, she, her name is Kay. Yes. I think she's going to, I think she could be a good uh, uh, part because she's a teacher and she wants to do that like a part time. So she knows a lot of people. She's so. the one that you knew from uh, dancing, right? Right. Yes. yes. Yeah. I remember her. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So following up with those people, checking in on them um, just to see how you could help. Or maybe you maybe a reason to contact them is hey I wanted to share this with you right I don't know if you've uh, how much you've thought more about your real estate career but you know I thought you might find this interesting and then you find something about real estate or maybe a digital copy of the MREA or something like that to share mm -hmm. and let them know you might they might find that interesting yeah. and I will add to that you know when I first came to Keller Williams in 2017. Out of all the brokerages that I um, had interviews with, only one person, which was from KW, had follow up with me. That's it, right? So they're actually going to be shocked. They're going to be impressed that you're you're staying up on them, and it, it it's really going to show you that impact that following up has with your past clients, with your database, with everything else. It makes a massive, massive impact. And you're gonna to start to get this kind of new, new vision of what, what follow up and what lead generation is. 
is that it is just a conversation. There's not that fear behind it. There's not anxiety. You get excited to talk to everyone about this kind of stuff. So go through it and see the results of it. Once you start having results, you're really going to start to get excited and motivated to do it more and more. Yeah. And getting that, pa- I'm telling you, getting that passive income, even if it's just a hundred bucks, um, that's really cool because it's literally just free money. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could be taking the Zoom from the beach right now instead of the office or or your house. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, and maybe you should think through a plan of what you want to use the profit share for, right? If I could, for example, I one way to think about it is I want to earn enough so that I it pays for my cap, right? Then it's almost like you're 100% year round if you earn that. Or for many agents, that'll pay for their yearly family vacation, right? Maybe they take a vacation and that's going to cost them $7,000. They plan all their profit share for that, right? Or you put that into a college fund for your kids or whatever, right? There's a million things you could do with that money. Um, but it, it, it's important to think through what you would do with it and tie some emotion to it. The emotion that's tied to that earning and what it's going to be used for is what's going to keep you motivated to be inviting people to the company, right? Um, these are just a couple, and I can email this, this form and the other one that has like the profit share explainer graphic on it. I can email that out to everybody. Um, but again, these are just three basic scripts and it doesn't have to be anything more than this. This is the same one that we just covered. I love doing transactions with you. Here's another one, you know, Hey, Yana, it's Matt Brown. It was so much fun doing that transaction with you. I really liked you the way you handled your clients when things got dicey uh, during the inspection period. It was awesome. And I think you really saved the transaction. Um, so I wondered if we could get together maybe next Tuesday, I wanted just to get to know you a bit better and learn about how you became so knowledgeable, right? Again, you don't have to use these exactly. You can change and alter these, um, but it's good to have a focal point or a starting point to base those conversations on, right? Because I think a lot of people think, well, I don't know what to say to an agent. I don't want to pastor them or recruit them. Um, and I wouldn't think about it as recruiting. Again, you want to think about it as building a relationship, right? And then here's the third one. It was so much fun talking with you at the seminar, seeing you at the conference, running into you at that open house, however you saw them and connected with them. Hey, can we meet for coffee next Tuesday? I'd just like to get to know you and talk shop. Does that sound good? How about Tuesday at 10? So that's just talking to another agent and saying, hey, let's let's get together and just talk about the business. What's been going on for you? How's your business been going? I can let, I'd love to share with you what's been going on with me and, and how I've uh, been closing transactions and so on and so forth. And then of course, this will take you to a link where there's more information on profit tree or profit share and building your profit share tree. Okay, any questions? on those things that I've covered. This is Shelly, I have a few questions. Sure. Um, Is it taxed? Like if you do get some profit share money, is it just taxed as income? Yep. It would be a 1099 that you receive with a profit share, with your profit share earnings on there. So yes, it would be a great question. Okay. And then um, if your first level person, if they left, but they had other people, second or third level, whatever, does that, do you get, does that second level move to a first or is that whole downline gone? I believe, and that's a good question that I don't 100% know the answer to, but this is what I believe would happen is if that person that's in your first, um, in your first line were to go, I think the rest of them would just stay in. The, well, that's a, that's actually a really good question. I'll have to find out. I don't know. Cause my okay. assumption, my assumption would be they would just stay in the tree um, but I don't know if the one that was in the second would move up to the first line. I don't think that would happen because that person that's in the second line, well, it could, I don't know. That's a, it's a fantastic question. I've never been asked that question, All right. um, which is surprising. Cause I've been in this company for, for, I've been <laughs> in this company for a long time and I, I've been to a lot of profit share classes and, um, that's a new one. I just never okay. thought about that. Not that I have any, but you know. <laughs> right, but if that were to happen, um, yeah. <laughs> and then 
Um, so like I joined after that 2020 date. Um, so what happens like if you just retire or, you know, you're not in real estate anymore, you don't go to a competing agency, but right. You just retire. Yeah. Then, well, the profit share would continue, right? As long as you're vested, right. And, and what that 2020 thing was, is you now need to be vested for seven years, meaning you'd have to be at the company for seven years. And then if you retired, then you would get that in perpetuity and, <laughs> and you can will that to your children or whatever, whoever you'd want to will that, that pa passive income too. Okay. So as long as the agents that are in your downline, obviously are still at the company, that's the one, you know, they have to still be at the company and contributing to the, the profit. Um, but as long as that happens and you've been with the company for seven years, then that just keeps going until, until the very end. Okay. So get them while they're young. That's right. Exactly right. Get them while they're young. So they're here producing and then leave that to your kids, your family or whatever. Thank you. That was yeah. it for me. Anyone else? Okay, is anyone going to start to implement some sort of plan and be purposeful about taking advantage of this? Yes. Because there's another thing that we have that kind of goes hand in hand with profit share, which is cap share, right? Is everyone familiar with cap share? That's another way you can directly reduce your, um, your company dollar. So if you... If you found an agent that was interested, you could do what's called cap share with that agent, and you can reduce your thirteen thousand dollar cap to ten thousand, right? So again, there's many benefits for simply inviting someone to events or to the company, and then they decide to join. There's a lot of benefits for you and for them, right? Because now they're yeah about the capping, so. Will the person that I'm inviting, how about their cap? Because most of them, you know, the people that I know, um, their cap is lower than us and, or they don't even have like a cap. So no, I'm most, willing, many companies I'm, don't have a cap system. Many, yeah, it's, just a, it's just a monthly fee or a transactional charge. A transaction, yeah, like a fee. And and I want invite, to invite them, but it's like, well, uh, you know, starting with the cap, probably they won't, they won't want to move from their company. Or yeah, like that. I think that's, that's, then with someone like that, that's someone who's focused on what they're paying instead of the value the broker provides, right? So that's a conversation about value, right? Because another thing is, let's say, let's say you work, uh, you say you're at a company that doesn't have a cap, right? Let's say the cap is zero. Well, 0% of zero is still zero, right? If they're at a company they pay nothing for, but the company has nothing to provide them and they don't do any business, what good is that for them or the company? It's none, right? I know. And I already told, because I have a friend and she's like, you know, um, I can see that she's not doing much business. She's uh, with um, this bridge company, bridge uh, so yep. I told her and she even have a chat with Andy, but she ended up like, you know, uh, it's too much of cap. I prefer to sell two or three transactions a year, but am I gonna be making maybe the same when you are doing six or seven transactions? Like, I don't think so, but okay. <laughs> right, right. And, and, you know, if maybe that's the best fit for that person then, you know what I mean? Like this company isn't, the fit for everybody you know yeah. what i mean it, it's if you want to build a true real estate business and have huge success and earn what you want to earn and have the life that you want then this is guaranteed the best real estate company you can run your business out of right so and you know i had i can tell you this my perspective was this exact same way when i first talked to keller williams i think it was in 2000 six or something like that. I talked to someone at the Stillwater office many years ago and I didn't see, I didn't see value in brokerages at that time. I thought, well, who cares what, what brokerage I'm at? I'm the one who finds the business and all the rest of it. Right. 
Then I started to look more into Keller Williams. I started to have conversations with the team leader at our office, the previous team leader before Andy. And that's when like the, the blinds were lifted. Then I was like, okay, now I can see why it does matter who you're associated with and what company you're doing business with, what company you're partnered to do business with. And my yeah. income, my income was very clear. In 2011, my lowest producing year in real estate, I think I earned 30, uh, you know, and I was doing this full time only real estate, but my gross commission was somewhere around 35,000, I think, right? So that's before splits or taxes or anything else. I was at Remax at the time. Um, so I barely squeaked by that year, right? I, I just made it um, with credit cards and the little I earned. So then you fast forward to 2012, I took bold in February as a Remax ad agent. I joined Keller in April and about a year later, my GCI was, was just about 110,000. So in a little over a year, I went from 35 to 110. And it is because of, of the change in me, but the change in me occurred because of the people I was surrounded with and the brokerage I was at, right? Yeah. And yeah. I, started learning, I started learning things that I wasn't doing that I should have been doing, right? So it is, a, I, you know, you bring up a great point. It is a challenge to express these thoughts and these ideas to another agent. Because it, if they may start with only looking at what am I paying the broker, right? And if that's, that's, that's what I would call a limiting mindset or a scarcity mindset, right? And, yeah. and someone, they might, be, they might be like that for the rest of their lives, but that can change. It changed for me. That's how I was, right? And then I was like, wait a minute, maybe there's a different way to look at this or think about it. And then I, you know, and then my income increased year after year after year after year because I was here. And previous brokers, I was at six other brokers before I came to Keller. And every year at those other brokerages, it was sort of the same. I'd bounce around, you know, 50, 60,000. And then, you know, they had 30 that year. I think the most I made at another brokerage for gross commission was probably 70. Um, maybe in 2006, something like that. Um, but at Keller, I've far more than doubled that, right? So it, it's always at the end of the day, it's up to us on what we do and what actions we take. But yeah, you know what? while we were talking, you're very right. While we were talking, I was checking how their sales. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Well, she's been doing real estate for four years and I'm on my, well, I, my, I, my anniversary was in January, my second year. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I already passed the number. Oh, I'm sure. You and it you're... was like, yeah, I was just like gossiping, like, okay, I want to see. So, <laughs> right, right. So imagine, hopefully that, that, you know, it's, it's prudent to start to think through ways that we can share that value that the company provides to kind of get over that with them, right? Yeah. Um, but but, but it, it probably would take time with someone like that. Yeah, you're right. And people notice it because when I just um, let people know that I was a realtor in my Facebook, um, a couple of them mentioned like, oh, that's great. And you are with one of the best companies, brokerage. Yeah. And I was, yeah, so they notice it, you know? They Absolutely. They yeah. Absolutely, right? So oh. thank you all for being here and investing time in yourselves and your business and learning um, about the opportunity that Profit Share provides. Um, I, any, any last questions? Yeah. Well, not about this, but... Uh, do you guys um, can like give a class about taxes about uh, you know I'm I need more information about it I need yeah. information about like um, you know like in a regular job I know it's a 401k here I don't know it does like a kind of like investment I don't know if you can give us some information about that yeah, like general tax information on how you should be running your taxes as an agent. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. And also how to invest. 
because I have heard like people that they said, I don't pay much to, um, to the IRS, but I invest my money. And they're like, oh, I'm interested. I want to know how to do it. I don't want to pay. I pay this year, but I don't want to pay <laughs> again. Right. Yeah. No, that is actually in the works. Um, we, Alec and I have talked about doing that within the coaching program, but also at the market center level. I know that Carrie's working on that right now. Oh, um, that's great. We're, we're working on maybe having someone come in once a month. Is it once a month? I can't recall now, or once per quarter to kind of go over a profit and loss and show you how you can read a profit and loss and how you should be structuring your business and how you should be protecting your income from taxes, right? Because the tax yeah. burden, the biggest, the biggest bill we have each year, one of them is our tax bill, right? It's a large That's chunk. Great, because um, this time that I make my taxes, I learn a lot with this new uh, 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 tax, uh, I don't know, how accountant. Yep. But before the previous years, I noticed that I didn't claim a lot of things because I didn't know. So ah. a good idea for new people to learn that because like I said, I didn't know that I could claim specific things and now I know, but I, probably there is more. So yep. I don't know. Yeah, and I always advise, you know, especially if you set up your, the way you're paid, you set up an LLC and the LLC is paid and then the LLC pays you. I'd recommend getting, hiring a good CPA, a good tax accountant. Because a good tax accountant, when you're doing more of a complicated return like that, where you're doing a business return and a personal return can be very, very valuable. Right. But it, but it, it can also be, it can be expensive depending on who you use. I yes. used to, I used to, for a long time, 10 or 12 years, I used a company called uh, Stovall and Associates. And I think I paid, I paid on a monthly basis. And I think I was paying somewhere close to maybe 6,000 per year um, total. So I paid it monthly, but, and that was to, that was for any, that was to get a profit and loss. That was for my bookkeeping. That was for payroll for myself. And that was for both my, my personal tax and my business tax filings. That's good. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. And so I had the one company that did all of that together. That's awesome. So, but no, that's a great suggestion. And um, yes, that is in the works right now. I would guess we should have something like that um, in the next month or so is my guess. Yep. All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Have a fantastic day. We'll see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.